right, everybody. This is uh, my remote start generator box that I built and installed in the house. It allows me to start the generator from the inside without having to go outside and do anything to it and uh, get the house going on backup power if we lose electricity. So uh, anyways, I got this project box and just about everything you see right here off of Amazon. Um, I got two of these. There's one here and then there's one in between the control box and the generator outside that's got a uh, relay board mounted in it. It's kind of like the brains of the operation. Anyways, we'll go over that a little later and I'll show you how it's wired up and how it connects from the control panel here and it interfaces this to the generator out there. Uh, but anyways, give you a little quick demo of how this thing works. Pretty straightforward. You got on and off here. This cuts the power on to the control panel here and to the relay board um, in the intermediate box. And um, we got electric choke installed on the generator. I'll show you that in a minute. But anyways, electric choke on. All right, there's electric choke. Now we'll go to fuel source gas and the generator cuts on. That turns the power on to the generator outside. And from here, it's just uh, as simple as pushing and holding the start button until it cranks. And then once we get it running, we'll let it run a few seconds and we'll turn the choke off just like you would if you were actually uh, starting it from the generator itself. So here we go. I got the window open here, so hopefully you can hear it start. It is running kind of rough and we'll cut the choke off now. And uh, if you'll notice down the bottom, we got a little power station here, power meter. Tells us a little bit about what's going on outside. Um, right now, we've got 240 volts and it's not pulling any current yet because I haven't cut it on yet. But anyways, that's the control box. Um, at some point, I'm gonna get the green light working so it cuts on with this. That way you know the generator's running because I just have the, uh, the window open so we can hear it in the video. But, um, on a normal scenario, you wouldn't cut the window open or open the window, most likely. And it'd be a little hard to hear if it's running or not. Anyways, we'll tie that in a little later. I gotta get a AC LED versus a DC LED. Uh, we'll just tie it into this, and when this gets power, that'll glow. So, anyways, uh, that's uh, the control box. And uh, we'll go downstairs under the house, and I'll show you the intermediate box and how everything's wired. And uh, we'll get the cover off of this too and show you the switches and how everything's wired up here too. All right, so we got the cover pulled off here off the control panel and you can see my wiring. Uh, it's really simple here pretty much on the switches. Um, just got a few outputs and inputs and uh, that's about it. Uh, but one thing I do like about these switches, I can't show you right now because uh, I'm holding the camera and this, but they're quick disconnect. So you can take that little tab and unlock them and the switches actually completely separate from their uh, mechanical portion. It actually does the electrical connections, uh, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, but anyway, so that's the, that's the back side of the control board here. And like I said, that little green light, we're gonna replace it for a AC LED. That way it cuts on whenever the generator starts making power and you know it's running. All right, guys, we're here under the house. I uh, apologize for the poor lighting, but all I have under here is my little headlamp here. Uh, but anyways, this is our intermediate box that holds the relay board and everything, the bus bars for the whole setup. Um, we'll take that cover off here in a second and I'll show you all the wiring and everything. But um, anyways, we just have uh, the cable coming in from the uh, laundry room where the control board is. And it goes in the box, comes out, uh, goes out to the house. Um, still got to get all these wires tidied up. They're just kind of drooping down. But uh, anyways, we'll get that all tidied up a little later once we get everything finalized. Um, but let's take that cover off and I'll show you the board inside and how it works and all the wiring. All right, we got the cover off here. Um, this is the relay board. I don't know if you can see it good or if it's in focus or not. But um, anyways... It's an eight relay module, uh, like you would use for an Arduino. Um, but I've got it set up to use 
with my switches upstairs. They don't need eight, but it uh, gives me a little room for expansion later on down the road if I'm gonna add features. Or if one of the relays goes bad, I can just swap over to a different relay versus replacing the whole board. Um, but anyways, I know it kinda looks like a big mess right now, um, all the wires, but everything's got quick disconnects on it. Comes in, goes out, so it can be disconnected real easily. Um, like here's the input from the control panel, comes in, it triggers those relays and then they operate the generator outside. Um, we got a main bus bar over on the left-hand side. The bottom three lugs are positive buses and the top three are negative buses. And uh, they power everything that needs electricity um, from the battery. And this is that um, battery mender that I was talking about where it'll plug in and charge the battery. I've just got to get a, an outlet installed right here near this for 110 volt. Um, but that's it. That's the module, the intermediate module, and uh, that starts the generator. All right, so we're out here at the generator. Um, this is the generator I have. It's a Furman. It's a um, 9D400 peak watt and 7,500 continuous watts on gasoline. I've got it set up on gasoline right now. Um, especially for the um, remote start that I've installed in the house. The only disadvantage of the dual fuel with this setup is you actually have to come out here and turn this knob to change fuel sources. So if you had LP set up, you'd have to turn this knob. Um, I'm sure there's a way that you could automate this if you wanted to. Um, I have no desire of using LP right now because you don't get as many watts out of it and it doesn't run as long. So uh, what I do is I always leave it on fuel like this and you can see it cut on. Um, that's all right because the, the board in there has like a power save mode. So after I think it's seven minutes, the board cuts off and goes into power save mode. That way the battery doesn't stay on. But anyways, I leave it like that. So if I need to start it inside, all I have to do is just fire it up and go. I don't have to come out here and cut the gas on because behind this knob is a fuel shut off for the, uh, for the gasoline. And then also, you can, if you hear it, you can listen. Hear that click? It cuts on a, a solenoid for the LP. Um, anyways, so we always leave it here to start off with or when we're in storage. All right, so over here on the side, you can see where the wiring comes in. Um, it plugs into the generator. I've got a quick disconnect here for all the main wires, um, all the controls that turn it on and off, the kill wire and all that. And this bottom wire, the green one that I have, I've just got spade connectors there, but I got a little tape wrapped around it to keep it from grounding. But that's the starter. I doubled up on that just because the starter pulls a little more current than everything else does. And uh, that way we don't overheat a wire or run too much current through it and melt it. Yeah, from this wire here, we just go over into a standard outdoor junction box. It's waterproof. We got some waterproof uh, cable pass-throughs here with rubber grommets that tighten up so water bugs and stuff can't get in. Uh, and then it just goes through conduit into the into the house there, along with the uh, main power coming out of the generator. Um, this cable that I used. This is speaker cable, actually. It's 18 gauge, it's nine conductor. Um, I got it off of Amazon. I figured it'd be nice to have a big bundle of wires that I could branch off and have one big wire coming out of the house versus nine or 10 small wires. Uh, but anyways, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description for the wire if you wanna use that same wire. the generator running let's talk a little about how we get the uh the house powered up off of it over here on the uh panel here we got a generator breaker and our main breaker i do have a lockout that i'm going to install i have to drop that down uh to these bottom two slots here and move those two up that way i can install the lockout that way you can't have the main breaker on at the same time you have the generator on for safety reasons uh, and a power outage. But um, anyways, for now, what we're doing, we'll cut the main power off. That'll separate the house 
from the grid. Now that it's isolated, all we have to do is uh, flip the generator on right there. Uh, but what I normally do first is I disconnect some of the big current draws. So the water heater, cut that off, the heat pump and the condenser. Um, we can't run all of those at the same time, unfortunately, on this uh, smaller generator. But anyways, so we'll cut that generator breaker on. And if you'll watch, we'll get some power up here on the um, current draw on our meter, letting us know that we're running on the generator power. All right, so there we go. And the generator bogs a little bit. And now we're running the house on generator power. And we just load shed as you would uh, on a normal backup generator and, uh, as you need things. So I found that with mine that I can run the well and the hot water here at the same time, luckily. So you can take a shower and um, at the same time, you know. And I've also installed a soft start on the HVAC so you can run the uh, air conditioner and the heat pump too with the well, but not with the hot water heater too. It just pulls a little too much. And uh, it doesn't get over the 9,500, but it does consistently stay over the 7,500. So, you know, just to be safe, we won't run them all at the same time. Um, but anyways, let's talk about the power meter here. The reason I chose this one is because it has a few different features all in one. You know, they've, there's a lot of these out on Amazon, um, but, Anyways, um, we got the voltage, the watts, how many uh, watts we're drawing. And the way I have this wired up, um, it's wired up through that nine conductor cable and it actually ties into the plug downstairs uh, where the generator plugs into the side of the house. That's where it's getting its power from. And that's where the shunt coal is for the uh, watt meter there. Um, if you wanted to, if you did like me and you installed it close to your panel here, you can just run wire over to the, the poles on your circuit breaker. I didn't want to do that because there's a big stud in between the two and I have to drill a hole would be a nightmare. Just easier to run it all together in that one cable that's already going down there. But anywho, um, pretty much that's it with how we run the house on the generator. Using the generator a little bit, now it's time to stop it. We got two ways of stopping it. Uh, pretty straightforward again, power off, cuts the generator off or in the event of emergency, you just wanna run in here and hit that button really quick. It shuts everything down. It kills power to the box. It grounds out the coil on the um, generator, shutting it down and uh, cuts off the intermediate control board down in the crawl space of the house. So let's just, boom. We hear the generator shut down, cuts off and uh, that's it. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I am going to provide some schematics for everything that I've done as far as wiring and hooking it up to my generator. Now yours will be completely different unless you have this exact same model as mine. Um, so, you know, just get the diagram from your generator, from your manual, and you can kind of interface it to my setup here. And um, I'll leave a link to all the parts that I use too, a parts list and a, a link to Amazon um, where you can get everything you need to do this too. So anyways, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you got any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments. I'll try and help you out. And uh, maybe you can get your generator where you can remote start inside too.